It's Louise Muttenshu here for Art Collector, where I have the pleasure to be speaking to Heather Straker about a key work from her exhibition Memoria, which is at Wellington's Page 1987 Gallery until August 14. And Heather joins me from her studio um, via Zoom. Hi, Heather. Hi, nice to be here. We're here to talk specifically about a photograph called Memoria, and I'll just put that on the screen. In the overview text for this exhibition, these images um, as a group are described as hovering between painting, photography and film. So Heather, I thought maybe you could tell us a little bit about how these images are constructed and the crucial role that this particular work makes to the narrative of the series. I've deliberately stripped the set of all artwork. Um, so there's no, and uh, the 1930 period, of course, was when um, things that were deemed culturally um, insensitive were deemed the degenerative art movement. So I basically, um, I've worked with film before, my background is in sculpture and film. And so I employed a film crew um, under my brief to come in and build me this set, set which I wanted a lot more expensive than last time because I really wanted that sense of isolation within the set. So it was a 10 by 10 metre, four and a half metre high set. And I wanted the set to be decomposing and almost breathing. Um, there's some little things in the set like um, earlier themes which come in like confessional grills and stuff like that. Um, and you have made a colour palette. I've deliberately gone very painterly as usual. Um, so I want them, because I print them on like a halloum rag with non-reflective glass, so they actually look like a fresco. Yeah, so it's, it was the starting point. This is the second last image in the series, which draws in the other characters that we've seen already. Um, the previous images are called Isolation Hotel. And it clearly, you know, given that title, conjures up the pandemic. The figure in the coffin is, I believe, you. <laughs> so I'm wondering what you're suggesting about the events that we're living through. And I'm wondering how that impacted your life and your work personally. Well, the, all the characters are the same. I've used some of them for 10 years now. And I like, because I've always worked with popular culture, I like the idea of almost like a Netflix um, series where I went from one body of work where the girls torched the piano, uh, which is a little bit of talk on colonialism and restructuring um, a new unity of um, diversity of my models. So I was very careful about what um, nationality gender were. And so they've literally just walked from their last set, which was called, into the set, which is called Isolation Hotel. So even though Isolation Hotel is kind of almost like a safe place for them, where they've just all arrived, walked off the last set. Yeah. And some comments I got last year about my representation of um, my models, I took that really seriously. So I cancelled myself last year. I had a small death. And so I talked to my models and actually asked them about the gaze and was I abusing them? Or, you know, how would I feel in that situation? And so they gave me a lot of feedback. And I was a little bit shocked when I came back to them and said, actually, guys, I just want you to fucking kill me off. <laughs> if you can't represent someone outside of your culture, outside of being a white um, lesbian artist, it's pretty boring. So, um, and, you know, I mean, in the history of, um, you know, painting and, and representation, it's always been gays. And, you know, I sort of started looking at that with the feedback I got and thought, well, that's kind of interesting. I've got to question myself, you know, and how am I representing these people? So hence why in this series, they're all looking at the camera, unashamedly looking straight ahead. And I place myself as, you know, the person that had died because I had, but then I sort of got reborn. So yeah, that's what was kind of a really interesting series works for me. It's very filmic kind of series um, and you know the, I feel like each image particularly this one is a vignette from a series of dark events with the kind of curtain and barred windows is that that's a confessional window are you saying. Um, so I guess I'm wondering you know the, there's the broken plates and rubble 
it's really closing those people in and making them look out at the viewer. How does it depart in media and treatment from your previous work and why is it so closed in? Are you giving them space and removing yourself from the picture altogether? I suppose I'm just trying to be aware. Um, you know, when you get feedback, it's best, I think maybe um, for earlier artists, you reacted and fought back quite quickly. And I think now this is a climate where you actually take things on board and actually kind of go, have I got this white privilege gaze or have I got this and what can I do to, you know, do something interesting with it? Um, rather than just being kind of I've done everything wrong, just kind of going, oh, come on, let's just work forward together. And um, all my models are actually really, um, they're actually not um, professional models, they're actually people I've collected. And so I've, over the period of years, watched them going through the doctorates and becoming dancers and, you know, getting their own voices, which has actually been really important. And I'd like to think that in a lot of my work, there is that component in it, where I actually, even though I am perhaps from the outside seeing as objectifying someone, I've actually liked to thought that I've actually been on a journey with them. Mm -hmm. And it, the viewer meets the gaze of these six women. Um, did you get any feedback from them about how they felt? With, did they feel more empowered through this image? than the previous one where you had a little bit of criticism? Um, I actually think they felt quite sick. They killed me off, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting because, you know, I've got a great team that works with me. Um, so one of the head stylists was um, doing up Genevieve, the beautiful African woman, and she was attached to a, a fabric crawl and she was about to cut it off and I went, no, no, that's great. That's just so kind of like poignant because also Genevieve, uh, when I first met her, she um, was a fashion student. So all these this sort of years of interacting with these models just sort of subtly go through the, the work. Um, yeah, and just their interactions with me. And I mean, I've, of course, I typecasted my own character in there as well, which was the androgynous looking woman. Um, and then Ava has been one of my models for probably eight years now. Um, so they, I sort of felt it was like a family portrait. Mm, that's lovely. Um, so, and what do you hope or expect that the audience will read from this image? I think in the past, I've, um, I mean, there's been some amazing death scenes in the art world. And you can notice that um, Diane on the right hand side vaping away. <laughs> and I kind of sort of extend the vape a little bit more, which once again, sort of slash slightly conceals it. Um, and the, then the woman beside her, Avril, where she kind of looks like a Dutch translucent model. Um, that was a really important typecast. And of course, Polo is, um, is part Maori, called a Maori. And then the reason why I picked um, the other model is she's actually um, Indian as well, but she doesn't kind of look obviously Indian. I often put, people in where you just can't quite work out who they are. And, um, you know, Genevieve's been through a great journey recently, just um, changing from her previous identity into, you know, her new identity, which is really powerful. Wow. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I sort of got quite a um, big, and, and of course the plates, <clears throat> they're all um, heraldic plates from what would have been like a, um, a house that would have had servants and you know everything had heraldic creeds sort of on it. Um, and of course the hotel was unmanned so it's just deteriorating and so you know the um, illuminated windows is kind of like normal imagine people trying to get in but they're just sort of safe in this little environment they're in. It's certainly cloistered and um, the rubble of rocks with the wine bottle in the middle well, that's been a bit of a joke. Well, that's not a joke, but it's interesting because uh, once again, I did a, a collaboration with Pegasus Bay on the series before, and I have been really interested in film and advertising, where they often put a little bit of product placement in something. <laughs> and so I said to the boys, um, and they're really good in arts, I said, how about <laughs> I put some product placement in um, the previous series? And they went, great. 
So then, um, because that theme was about fire, um, I turned them into Molotov cocktails. And so <laughs> that's why Molotov cocktails has gone from the previous series where they were torching the piano into the funeral scene in this one. So there's, you know, just subtle references that go, you know, from one series okay. through the other. Yeah, amazing. Well, it's, it, it is quite, it is very poignant and um, um, it's quite strong. And I love the, um, the group of all women um, from all backgrounds, obviously. It's, it's very powerful. So I just wanted to be strong and reunited. I think that was the message I was trying to put forward. No. You know, um, um, well, that's probably all we've got time for, but it really a beautiful insight into that image. Thank you so much, Heather. So, and I urge all of you watching to view this exhibition. Um, you can see it on the page website if you can't get there physically. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.